What's up castaways? This is miles away. Welcome back to another video. Now, as you guys know, I don't typically cover plugins that much on this channel as I'm very obsessed with the world of hardware, synthesizers, all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, I am an artist first, so I'm always looking for new tools that allow me to finish more songs for you guys more quickly. Every once in a while, a new plugin comes along that just completely changes my workflow and becomes a core part of how I make music for you guys. Well, the two plugins from OEK Sound, Soothe 2 and their new plugin Spiff, absolutely fit that bill for me and I want to talk to you guys about them today. Now, this is not a sponsored video, I actually just recently discovered Soothe 2 and was so blown away that I reached out to OEK Sound and they asked me if I wanted to check out uh, both Soothe and their brand new plugin Spiff. So what we're going to do today, we're going to jump into Logic, I'm going to show you guys how both these plugins have changed the way that I mix, and I'm going to show you guys how far you can get in a mix down using only these two plugins. Now before we begin, this is not a full tutorial, there's plenty of great tutorials out there for both these plugins, and that's not really what my channel specializes in anyway. I'm going to link two of my favorite tutorials in the description that'll help you better understand exactly what each of the controls do, but hopefully today you guys can take away some tips for how the workflow of your projects can change with these two plugins and how your mixes can improve. As always, if you like this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. It helps the channel grow and it's free for you guys. And that's it. Let's get started. All right, so here we are in Logic. So starting off, I'm gonna play you guys the demo that I made so you can hear how it sounds before we apply Soothe and Spiff to help the mix. Okay, awesome. So sounding pretty good already, but it definitely could use some mix work. So the first thing you guys are going to notice is everything is quite raw without many plugins. So that's because I recorded all the synths completely dry, just straight from my UAD Apollo interface, uh, the OB6, uh, and then the Monarch, uh, it's actually a plugin for the Monarch, right into my DAW with no EQ or anything like that. Um, and then for these vocals, this is just me kind of messing around on the mic, going through my, my UAD interface into my SSL preamp and EQ with some formant shifting. Um, they're going to a little bit of reverb and delay, but that's the only thing that is you know, being processed through reverb and delay right now. Um, and then finally the drums, these are just a couple stock kick and ride samples that I, I added. And then the, uh, the rest of the drums, the snares and the cymbals are from another project I'm working on. So everything is quite dry and raw. And I chose to do that specifically so I can show you guys exactly how far you can get in a mix with just soothe and spiff. Cause it's really quite something. Okay, let's start off first with the kick drum, because I think the kick drum, it's just a basic cashmere kick drum sample. It could really use a bit of punch to have it, you know, cut through the mix some more and get it that really, you know, punchy, transienty, really satisfying thing that makes people move on the dance floor. So let's fire up an instance of spiff. Okay, so what I'm going to do with Spiff here is I'm going to use Spiff to essentially accentuate only the part of the kick that I want to, which is going to be somewhere around, you know, 70 to 100 hertz, the thump of the kick that's really going to come through on club systems. So first things first, I'm going to take this high pass filter that's deciding that, you know, where the lowest frequency that Spiff will affect will be, and I'm going to drag that all the way down to about 30 hertz. So we're still not getting the absolute lowest mud that we don't really need. Um, um, but we're, we're going to get more of the sub fundamental. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, this high pass, uh, hot, sorry, this, uh, this, uh, high cut filter. And I'm going to grab that and drag it down. Cause we don't need same thing. We don't need the very top of the kick drums transient. That's already pretty clicky. I want to focus more on the thumb. So let's, let's drag it down to around 5k. And then we're going to take here our, our boost and we're going to drag it down and try to find while listening where the optimal place will be in the kick drum to get it to sound really punchy and just accentuate that particular part of the transient. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. 
liking right around there around like 140 139 something or like something like that um so yeah let's let's take a listen we're gonna drag that down just a little bit because it's a bit loud for me all right that sounds good now we'll listen with and without so without really lacks punch and now with spiff It's honestly genius because most transient shapers, if you've used them, they're going to affect the entire sound. And maybe you already like the, the top end click as it is. This allows you to do that. So we've only affected really the low end part of the transient to get that extra punch without, you know, messing with 10K plus, which is already sounding great in my opinion. Awesome, awesome plug in there. Okay, let's move on to uh, our bass. As I mentioned, that needs some work too. Um, so we're gonna go down here. As I mentioned, it's a bass I just kind of you know made quickly in Monarch, which is a great little Moog style plugin. Um, and the problem with this bass is again, without any EQ, it's really muddy uh, for most of the time. It doesn't mix well with the kick. And then at the last couple bars, I open up the filter and it suddenly gets too bright and harsh. So really, you know, a mixing nightmare. It's too muddy sometimes, too harsh some other times. So let's use Soothe to fix that and fit around the kick a little bit better. So same deal here, I'm going to drag down this lowest parameter because I want to affect the bass. Now, what's cool about Soothe is that, you know, you're, you're boosting a band here, you're actually boosting how much how much resonance suppression is going to happen. So it takes a little bit of time to get used to. And again, I'm not going to be doing a full tutorial here. I've linked a great tutorial for both these plugins in the description. I'm purely showing you guys my workflow and why these plugins have been such a game changer for me. So we're going to listen to exactly what we're cutting out because I want to make sure I'm highlighting the right part of the mud and using the listen knob, we can do just that. Awesome. Okay. Sounds good. And then likewise, we're going to drag this down. There's not really much in this base that goes above 10 K. And if there is, I kind of do like that, that top end sparkle. So we're going to make it so that it's not really going to affect much above 10 K. So now let's listen to the end where I open the filter. And if we did this correctly, we should see soothe only kick in on taming the high frequencies when I get towards that end part where I turn on the filter. Brilliant. So yeah, as you guys can see, I'm actually going to increase it even more because I want to listen in the mix while this is doing it and see if it, it tames that harshness that I was hearing earlier. That sounds pretty great to me. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the guitar. Now this guitar already sounds pretty sweet in my opinion, but I would love to accentuate the plucked nature of it because I was picking pretty softly and I, I wish I had recorded this while picking harder. So Spiff actually allows us to do that. So we're going to use Spiff and we're going to find exactly where my pick strokes are, the sound of the pick scratching the guitar, and we're going to only transient emphasize that one part. It's pretty crazy. So let's check that out. That sounds awesome to me. Let's go check that in the mix. A 
bit more subtle, but yeah, that totally brings out the pick strokes of the guitar like I was hoping. Okay, moving on to these random vocals that I recorded. So um, they're a little messy, but I kind of liked how they sounded, but they still don't really stand out in the way that I want them to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Soothe to identify which parts of the resonances within my voice after it's been formant shifted aren't great, cut those down, and then use a gain plugin after to boost everything else up. Sometimes it's really helpful to listen to the delta, which is essentially the exact frequencies you're taking away. Now, that isn't for everybody, but for me, I quite enjoy because it kind of gives me an exact idea of what's being cut away. Awesome. I'm, I'm liking how that's sounding. Let's, let's listen to it in the mix. Um, and again, this is cutting out a fair amount of the mids. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, add a gain plugin just to boost it a couple, a couple DB there. Amazing. It's much more clear now while still having warmth and presence where it needs to. Okay, moving on to the second half of this uh, drop here. I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor. Um, I bring in this really cool kind of ARP lead I made on the OB6 that was recorded through the uh, ecosystem in the big sky. Um, so it sounds super spacey and lush. Um, but I, I do feel like this one, it kind of, you know, comes in and it overpowers the vocal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and tame the mids. And also, if it needs it, I'm going to try to use uh, spiff to bring out the transients of the plucky sound as I go. So let's take a listen by itself. Again, I'm using my high pass and low pass filters a lot. I think those are probably my two most used parameters because a lot of synths, for example, like the OB6 just has a wonderful top end that's never too harsh for me. So I don't really want to mess with it. I just want to tame the mids and the low mids in particular. So we're going to go do that. Awesome. It really evens it out and sort of as it's needed, really kind of tames that mud that is getting in the way with the rest of the instruments, the vocals, the bass. Um, but I do want to bring out the transients more. So let's go ahead and add a spiff. Here again, we're going to use the listen parameter. Awesome. That like that really is this the frequency that I'm hearing in my head. Let's see how it sounds in the mix. Let's do before and after. So without and with It still retains the three dimensionality that I that I love about it in the movement, but it's just not quite as upfront and forward in the mix where a sound like this, you want it to be a little bit more playing second fiddle to the vocal or whatever the, the feature is. So really happy with that. Okay, a couple more things we want to edit here. So let's go ahead and deal with these ride symbols. So right off the bat, I'm hearing Again, just a stock cashmere ride sample. It's really kind of overpowering and, and too loud for what I want it to be. 
So this one should be dead easy for Soothe to take care of. We're just going to, again, target the high frequency resonances and just pretty much turn those down. easy as it does. You know, just like that, it's much less harsh and it's much easier to mix it. Okay, a couple more things to do here. So we've got this saw pad, um, again, on the OB6. As you guys can tell, I love that synth for everything. Um, but yeah, it's so basic. But there are some resonances from the filter that I think are popping out of the mix too much, which we're going to use Soothe to just completely, you know, change and deal with. Here, actually, I quite like the low mids already, so I just want to target those mids around 500 to, you know, 1 or 2K. So what we're going to do here, we're going to bring that down and then bring this down like that. And then let's see how that sounds. Awesome. Same deal with this little reverb hit of the OB6 going through the uh, big sky in the echo system. It just has too many mids for my liking, but uh, again, it's such a dynamic sound with all the different delay repeats through the tape setting that are degrading. I'd rather just use Soothe rather than a traditional EQ. Nice and simple. That one, that one could actually get turned up now. We've, we've cut out a fair amount of the, uh, the mud. Let's bring up the good parts of the frequency now. Okay, so we can also do the same thing to these uh, cymbals and toms, uh, just a really subtle little increase of the transients right around the mid range and the high range. I'm not gonna try to mess too much with the bass frequencies of the transients, so that's gonna sound like this. Nice, really just helps those hi-hats and shakers punch through without actually boosting the entire sound because I only want to affect the transient. Okay, cool. So one final tip before we wrap up, and it's a cool one. So um, here I've, I've copied down the chunk of bass that's going to play during this fill, and we're going to use Soothe and Spiff to try to make a pretty interesting little variation of the bass to use as a fill. Now, this is a basic example, but you can try this on some really crazy basses and any sort of interesting sound and get some pretty interesting, unique fills out of it. So what we're going to do here, we're going to grab Soothe, and we are going to use the delta. So we're going to hear the inverse of essentially everything that's being taken away. So that's going to sound like this. So let's turn that way up. Go ahead and turn up the sharpness so the bands are really narrow. Turn up the selectivity so there's more bands. And cool, we get this really interesting phasey sort of mid-ranged focus sound that's a, essentially like a reverse inverse mirror image of the original bass. Let's go ahead and add spiff to really just punch this up and beef this up. Cool, that's sounding pretty dope, pretty punchy. Then we're gonna grab some, you know, just run of the mill logic distortion and, and hit the distortion. Maybe a little bit too much distortion there. 
Cool. Let's hear that in context. All right, pretty simple fill, but it's cool, right? It, it just, these kinds of little things will add a lot of variety and movement to your tracks um, to just really kind of stop it from feeling stale and repetitive. And yeah, Soothe and Spiff are great for interesting use cases like that, as well as obviously for the main purpose they're designed for, which is helping you mix. So yeah, let's go ahead and listen to the entire track now and we can hear how Soothe and Spiff have just by itself really taken this track a lot forward in the mix process. Right, guys that about wraps it up for today bit of a different video i know but hopefully you guys found some interest there and learned a little bit about why soothe 2 and spiff are in my humble opinion two of the most revolutionary plugins that have come out in years as always thanks so much for watching let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll see you guys in the next video